What were the winners and losers at the box office this weekend? They were mostly winners, I would say. I mean, there was a lot of discourse online about Halloween ends and whether the film's day and date availability on Peacock was a definitive factor in its th theatrical opening weekend. And I would say it absolutely was not. Um, there was some punditry and tracking that suggested a $55 million opening. So when it only came in at $41 million, everyone was like, oh, no, they wrecked the film because of Peacock. The film was never going to open at $55 million. People did not like Halloween Kills. People did not like Halloween Ends. Reviews were negative, as were the reviews for Halloween Kills. You know, Halloween opened with 77 in 2018 because it was sold as sort of a lightning in a bottle. Uh, you know, you Jamie Lee Curtis is back after 20 years and the film was implicitly sold as a movie of the moment in terms of it's about generational trauma. It's about the Me Too movement. The strode women are smashing the patriarchy. You know, I, I apologize if I sound condescending, but having seen the movie before the marketing campaign began, I think a lot of that stuff was sort of invented on the PR tour. Um, Halloween Kills, which, you know, isn't a great film, but at least... It was a film that knew what it was trying to be while they were making the movie. Anyway, beside the point, point being, Halloween was an event. Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends were always going to pay like more conventional sequels. And if you look at trilogy enders that weren't super duper events like Fifty Shades Freed, uh, The Maze Runner, The Death Trials, even The Rise of Skywalker to a certain extent. It's like, you know, the film did make a billion dollars, so I mean, it wasn't like it was a flop nor were any of the other two that I discussed, um, you know, they opened about 80% of what their respective second film slash sequel predecessors opened with. Halloween ends, despite bad reviews and despite divisive discourse, um, opened with about 85% of Halloween Kills $49 million debut. So, so the idea bad. that this film is going to open at 55, I mean, not every end of an era you know not every final chapter gets a uh, finale bump they're not all deathly hollows part two they're not all logan which was successfully sold as a genuine event you know it's a you know it's hugh jackman's last run as wolverine so we thought um it's an r-rated movie which is you know he's never done one of those as as wolverine before um you know there were a dozen reasons why it was a unique event unto itself mm -hmm. beyond just oh it's just another wolverine sequel halloween ends which i like a little bit more than most people but that's fine uh, i'm on a contrarian streak of late um that one was just sold as it's another halloween sequel in this franchise and yes it's a finale to the laurie strode michael myers story but we've already had several of those over the line in the same this way that the rise 13th, of skywalker yeah. was sold as the end of the skywalker saga well i guess if you don't count return of the jedi so, Scott, um, I have a question for you. What was the point of releasing it on Peacock and theaters on the same day opposed to, like, the Elvis strategy where they release it in theaters and then later down the line they put it on HBO Max? Well, they did that with Halloween Kills last year as well. And that film, again, opened to what I would argue was a best-case scenario, $49 million opening, legged out to 92 domestic with 131 worldwide. And the stat that I like to throw out is that Halloween Kills domestically had a better retention from Halloween than did Halloween 2 from Carpenter's Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 from Rob Zombie's Halloween, and Halloween Resurrection from Halloween H2O, which was the first time Jamie Lee Curtis came back as Laurie Strode, but she's not going to give up and she's going to fight back this time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I quite like H2O, so I was sort of rolling my eyes in 2018 when they were arguing this is the first, you know, they're trying to sell something old and something new. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I'm getting off script for your question. Um, at the time, Jason Blum said he did this because he was di disappointed by how poorly Christopher Landon's Freaky performed when it opened in October of 2020 which was weird because that was a all due respect that was a much more challenging time for in terms of covid related to box office um and why in peacock had a very good october month 2021 in terms of new subscribers and viewership um and i think there was just the impression that well it obviously didn't damage the box office last time 
we've only got 15 million paying subscribers. <clears throat> so, you know, why not do it? We're not going to hurt the movies theatrical that much. And we could also stick to whatever contract negotiations we did last year in terms of the stars that thought they were getting a conventional theatrical release that are now going to get day and date. Because, you know, Blumhouse, fil Blumhouse films tend to be reasonably budgeted with a lot of back end thrown in the participants. So, for example, Ethan Hawke theoretically does the purge for scale, but if it makes a lot of money, he makes a lot of money. Um, but and I, I think it was just a matter of, well, we did it last year. It didn't hurt anybody. Why not try it again this year? And I would argue that it didn't hurt anybody this time. And I, I guess I very much disagree with the overall narrative that Peacock was this, you know, movie killer in terms of uh, Halloween ends theatrical potential. The idea that it was going to open to 55 was frankly ridiculous. It was unrealistic. It was not in relation to the film itself and reasonable precedent. precedent. And it's one of those dumb situations that, you know, sort of when I was a kid was my sort of my villain origin story as a, as a juvenile box office analyst. You know, like Pearl Harbor was never going to open to $100 million in four days over Memorial Day weekend in 2000. But when it only opened to 75, it ended up being tagged as a disappointment. Um, you know, Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows, was somehow pegged at opening at $30 million, even though the first Blair Witch Project opened with $30 million the previous year. And half the people who saw that film in theaters hated it. So you really think the sequel rushed out a year later is going to pull anywhere near that? Of course not. But when it only opened to 15 million, it was tagged as a flop. Um, shouldn't they then sell well, it as like an, shouldn't they under promise then? So it's not they did. perceived it's as a tracking. flop? Okay. Unfortunately, there is a perception, you know, there's a perception in the media and, and among the real world, or at least perpetually online, that tracking is supposed to be a prediction. It's not. Tracking, when I talk about tracking, I talk about third-party companies that do research and polling, and they put out, they give numbers to the studios anywhere from five to three weeks out from opening weekend. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be public, but it has become public. It's been less public since COVID, but, you know, it's, it's and it's often used as an ironclad prediction to say this is what the film is going to make if it does anything under that then it has failed or the, you know if they're able to lowball the numbers you know the studio is able to massage expectations and it opens higher than that oh wow it's a surprising success tracking is supposed to be a tool for studios to adjust their marketing choices in the final lap before a film's opening weekend. So if it's playing really well with young dudes, but not young women, you know, you maybe cut some trailers, stereotypically speaking, I apologize, that, you know, appeal to young women. Or if it's doing very well with kids, but not their parents, you maybe cut some spots that make it look less juvenile. Um, it's very simple, less to get explanation, but it's, it's pretty much how that works. Unfortunately, you know, over the last, 15, 20 years, it's become this this publicly aware number that gets used as an ironclad you know, prediction mm -hmm. where this is what the film is going to do. And sometimes tracking is wrong. And that's fine. It's not an exact science. It's not supposed to be an exact science. And when you have tracking that's released, you know, three, four weeks before opening weekend, there's a lot of factors that can make that go up or down. Um, reviews that's the one of the big ones you know if a film is tracking at this number and then the reviews come out early enough and say holy crap this movie's great maybe you can get that up uh studios are obviously going to spend more on marketing the week of release versus five weeks out from release you know you had this ridiculous meme going around in 2017 that wonder woman was being under marketed this was like a week before Guardians of the Galaxy 2 opened. Yeah, you think Warner Brothers was holding some of their stuff in reserve until Guardians came out? Maybe, possibly? Yes, the answer is yes. The film opened with $105 million over three days, which is a massive overperformance in terms of tracking. Um, but, so this was a case, I think, of too many pundits, analysts, and regular people you know, picking the high number as realistic mm -hmm. and then trying to find a reason why they were wrong. Do I think Peacock was a factor in the film opening closer to 40 million than 50 million? Sure. Obviously, it's available for free on a streaming service that 15 million people pay for. 
you know, I, my wife and her and my two older kids watched it on Peacock on Thursday night. I was doing a, a third party podcast for a friend of mine. He hated the film. I liked the film and we were joshing back and forth and she was sending me text messages and why it was terrible. <laughs> yes, she shouldn't be texting during the movie, but I digress. Um, so um, Halloween ends was the latest horror movie to be released this Halloween season. Like there was films like Pearl, Barbarian and Smile. So what movie so far of those is on track to be the winner of the horror movies this season? Smile lost the battle. It fell to number two with a $12.6 million opening weekend, but it is absolutely winning the war. Nice. It dropped just 33% in its third weekend after a shocking like 18% drop in weekend two, which is you know six cents levels get out levels um it's at 71 domestic it will probably crawl past 100 million dollars domestic which is incredible for an r-rated original star free and all due respect parker finn is no jordan peele in terms of awareness and prestige not yet and was it supposed um, to perform that well what was that was smile supposed to perform this well no it was intended as a paramount plus release until it got excellent test screening scores and to their credit paramount decided this belongs in theaters we're going to roll the dice mm -hmm. and now they win money lots and lots and lots of money and let me get my yellow highlighter out and because the film was a smashing theatrical success, it will be more successful on Paramount Plus than if it had just been a Paramount Plus premiere. Why is that? Because it already has the awareness mm -hmm. and uh, buzz and popularity and word of mouth that comes with being a successful theatrical release. Those that wanted to see it that for whatever reason didn't get out to a theater or maybe they liked it so much they would like to watch it again because once it comes to paramount plus they're gonna do that but if the film had just been a premiere just on streaming it probably would have come and gone in a week and a half and that applies even to very good streaming premieres like prey um Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, which won an Emmy, but and it's very funny. Uh, but you know, and that was always intended as a Disney Plus premiere. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if they could have gotten the rights to all of the characters that they use in that film if it had been a theatrical release, but that's outside of my uh that's above my uh purview. Um but I, I do think that film would have been a solid success, theatrical success. I mean, it opened before I, you know, I think it opened right before Memorial Day weekend when there was nothing else in theaters, or right after Memorial Day weekend. Um, but you know, unfortunately, what we're seeing is is even very good streaming premieres even on netflix they tend to be you know flashing a pan in the first 10 days and then they get replaced by the next big thing to be fair that's netflix's business model and i don't think anyone goes into it expecting otherwise uh there are some cases where you have a film that sort of catches the zeitgeist and sticks around a little longer like the military-based romantic drama purple hearts which almost got as much viewership in the first 28 days as the gray man which was a 200 million dollar would-be franchise launcher starring ryan ryan uh ryan gosling and chris evans um 